Let us analyze what is the most mysterious thing in the world. What is the greatest surprising thing or mysterious thing in the world? You can come up with some of your answers. God, then hmm? humans. humans, then hmm? birth. Birth. birth, then universe, universe. Outer, space. outer space, then life, life. then <laughs> death, death. Hmm. then years ago, the same question was put to a great man called Yudhishthira Raja, hero of the Indian epic Mahabharata, one of the greatest epic ever written in the planet Earth, Mahabharata. The hero of that epic is called Yudhishthira Raja a great king. The same question was put to him by a demon, by a demigod. It asks him, Kimas Charyam Itak Param, what is the greatest surprising thing on this planet Earth? What is the mysterious thing, most mysterious thing on the planet Earth? Yudhishthira gives a beautiful reply with a Sanskrit sloka. I will give you that Sanskrit sloka and then give the overall meaning. Agan agani bhutani gachanti yamandiram seshas tiramis chanti kimas charyam ataparam means Every day, so many lives are going to the Imas abode, the death's abode, to the death's house. But the people who are staying here, they think they are going to be here eternally. They think they are never going to die. This is the greatest surprising thing for me on this planet Earth. After seeing every day so many people dying, so many deaths happening, again people continuously believe, feel and live with the idea that we are not going to die, our life is not going to end, for us it is not. We always think only somebody else is going to get into the accident. We always think only somebody else is going to die. This is the greatest mystery. Death. Death is the greatest mystery. Mystery of all the mysteries. God is a vague word. God is not a clear experience in your life. God is just a vague concept till you become enlightened. Even the idea of God originated, idea of God is created after the question, what happens after death? When this question was raised, Many people try to give answer to this question in their own way. Many have tried to answer this question. So, somebody wants to answer 
some people created theories some people created philosophies few people created religions even the idea of god is created by the people who tried to answer this question what happens after death this is the most mysterious question according to me from the time immemorial so many persons again and again and again trying to answer this question every person who tried to answer this question created a new religion new cult new sect all the religions are born out of this one question what happens after death what is actually happening at the time of death almost all the religions are born out of this one question what happens after death what is death that's a most mysterious thing many people try to give many different kind of answers many different understandings some say there are so many births some say there is only one birth some of them are in the idea why should we bother at all so much forget about it when it comes let us face why should we even think of death let me answer this question first why should we even analyze understand think about death because your idea your understanding about death is going to change your understanding about the life please be very clear your understanding about death is going to change your understanding about life you can see the religions which believes there is only one life they created a deep sense of hurry everything anxiety in man all the western religions they believe only one life that is why they wanted to take the maximum juice out of this life you have to enjoy whatever you want to enjoy in this 70 years span you can't miss if you miss you miss it so you are not allowed to rest to relax continuously you have to finish what you want to finish the idea of only one birth gave birth to science that is why you start working searching for all comforts maximum possible comforts the maximum possible joy maximum possible juice from the outer world second thing all the eastern religions they speak about many births this idea gave birth to spirituality when you have an idea so many births when you understand there are so many births again and again and again you come down and go back you feel bored fed up same drama you come down this time you catch somebody as a husband somebody as a brother somebody as a son somebody as a neighbor somebody as a enemy you big create a big setup with which you live the moment you die you go to the next body again you create one full set up it goes on goes on goes on after some time you feel bored you are totally fed up how many times coming down doing the same drama 
again going back, again coming down. You start thinking towards getting liberated. No more coming back. The moment you start thinking about liberation, no more coming back. You start working towards moksha or enlightenment. That is what is the whole spirituality. Your understanding about death plays a major role about your understanding about the life. Your understanding about death plays a major role on the concept or understanding about life also. According to me, it is your concept about death based on which you really live. Only based on that you really live. Now, let us enter into this mystery of mysteries, the most mysterious thing of the life which we need to understand really in our life. There is a beautiful Zen saying, learning the art of dying is the real thing or the ultimate thing which you can learn in your life. Preparing and learning for the right beautiful death is the real thing which you can achieve when you live. A small Zen story. One day an enlightened master suddenly declared that he is going to die around morning, six, next day morning around 6 o'clock. Of course, enlightened people always know about their death. They declare beforehand when they are going to die. He declared around morning 6 o'clock he is going to die. The beauty is his disciples. They said, no, 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 Swamiji, Please wait for two, three more hours because it will be too cold early morning. <laughs> Why don't you wait for a few hours so that we can prepare for your body getting burned or whatever all the last rituals. He said, all right, what is there? He said, okay, and told the disciples that he will pass away around 12 o'clock when exactly clock struck. Well, he greeted them all and hands dropped by themselves. He left the body. I wanted you to know about a small but very important incident. When British people were bringing the whole India under their control, In the central India, there is a small tribal village. Now the village is not there. There was one small tribal village. The British was, British was trying to bring that village under their control. The whole village is only totally 100 people. But highly mystical people, mystical means totally into devotee, into meditation and who knows the esoteric arts. It is said that in that village people never felt sick and not only that, even if they dreamt as if they have heard somebody in their dream, Next day morning they will go and apologize to the person. There is a record about the village. Tonight if they dream that they have heard somebody in their dreams, 
Next time meeting, they'll go and apologize him. Please forgive me. I have hurt you in your, in my dreams. The explanation is, unless you have a subtle vengeance, unless you have a subconscious idea to hurt him, you will not even hurt in the dreams. So they want, they don't even want that unconscious vengeance. That is why they go and ask him to apologize. Such a highly mature spiritual group, they, they have nothing of the outer world, but they had everything of the inner world. These British people, when they try to catch that village, the villagers are not ready to surrender, give their freedom to anybody else. But these British people said, either you come to our lifestyle or we will kill you. You will be surprised. These guys, the villages, they said, you don't have to kill us, don't worry, we know the art of dying, we will die by ourselves. British people thought they will commit suicide. The villages will commit suicide by some medicine or some method. You will be shocked. There is a clear record. The whole villages, this gathered in one group, in the center of the village, as a group, they all stood, the whole group stood in one place, in front of the eyes of the British soldiers, just they chanted some mantra, prayed, and all the hundred just fell and died. All the hundred, they simply fell, they just dropped their body and died. And the incident is recorded by the British soldiers. And they say, first time we felt guilty of killing somebody. We people are trained to kill. We never felt guilt when we, when we kill people, even in the wars. But here, we felt a deep guilt that we killed innocent people, killed such a simple people, such a great people. The record says we feel, we feel deeply guilt. What we need to understand, the art of dying, simply they are able to drop the body and go. Gita says, death is nothing but changing the coat. Learning how to die is the one and only important art which you are supposed to learn when you live. Because art of dying will teach you art of living also. Now let us look into the mystery of death, which is the greatest mystery. Can anybody speak about death? There is a proverb in Tamil. Nobody can speak because who has seen has never come back. Who has come back has never seen. So, unless you see, you can't speak. But the man who has seen never comes back. Nobody else can speak about death except an enlightened man. An enlightened man is authorized because he is already dead. He has underwent the death experience. Unless you undergo the death experience, you can never become liberated. You can never become enlightened. Except enlightened man, nobody else can speak about death. One more thing, the mysteries of death can never be recorded and logically proved. It can never be reduced to a fact and figure because it is such a personal experience. Only few enlightened masters are able to speak their experience. The problem 
they don't have certificate god never gives certificate hereby i declare he is graduated in my enlightenment industry <laughs> my enlightenment university god never does it anyhow only few people who experience shares their view and who really felt the energy of the master only they take advantage of that science that is why the mystery of death is unknown to so many thousands of people and i tell you this science can transform your whole life because we have not understood this simple mystery we are missing so many things in the real life one important thing the main thing why this mystery of mystery the secret of death is not become popular in the west because it cannot be proved scientifically of course now there's a lot of research going on about this nde near death experience thousands and thousands of people near death experiences are getting recorded by doctors and psychoanalysts and hypnotherapists they are all working on this field i was seeing the other day about a website which speaks about the near death experiences they have recorded more than 10000 people near death experience more than 10000 people near death experience have been recorded and you will be you will be shocked you will be surprised almost all the experiences are falling in same tune almost all the experiences the famous hypnotherapists they also tried to hypnotize the human beings and get their past life memory they tried to slowly slowly lead them into their past slowly into their very death itself to get the data what they experience when they enter into body and when they leave the body in the past life again that's a wonderful thing shocking or revealing surprising informations again they are all matching falling in tune with what our upanishads what our rishis declare about death so i think now the science is spreading in the west also now let me come to the point directly all this time i was beating around the bush to prepare you because you need a little bit of mental preparation to listen the great truths now let us directly enter into the idea of death what happens exactly when you die what happens exactly when we leave the body from my own experience let me narrate i can assure only one thing hereby i promise what i am speaking is truth <laughs> no other authority can be cited no other support can be given only the experience is the solid proof anyhow but i will try to quote some of the similar ndes near the experiences recorded by the stigma therapists and psychoanalysts and doctors the research reports the conclusions of the doctors what their researches say about the experience and what rishis say about it 
and what is my own experience. Of course, all the three is in same tune. So I present it to you, what happens exactly. When you leave the body, you cross seven different spaces, seven different layers of your being. The physical, pranic, mental, subtle, causal and spiritual and finally nirvanic. Seven layers of body is penetrated. You go through the seven layers. You cross through the seven different space. First thing, what happens when you leave the body? You undergo a tremendous pain. Pain means the unimaginable pain. Let me give you a small example. If you scratch, if you cut your hand just half inch, how much it pains? You know, a small blade half an inch. How much of pain you suffer? Six feet, your body will be just, your consciousness and your body will be toned. Then imagine what will be the pain. It's almost like a 10,000 scorpions biting at the same time. You may think, why oh, I am telling all these things? A little bit of meditation when you are living can heal and can guide you at the time of passing away. Before giving the solution, you must know the depth of the problem. Unless we know the depth of the problem, we will not go for solution. When you first move from the physical body, from when you leave, your body will be practically your consciousness will be torn from the body such a heavy, severe pain, that is why you immediately fall into coma. According to doctors, coma is automatic mechanism to make you not to feel the pain. It's automatic anesthesia. If the pain becomes too much, you can't bear. So God has made automatic anesthesia system. The automatic anesthesia system is coma. If the pain is unbearable, if it is too much, you automatically fall into coma. That is why anybody who dies, first they fall into coma, only then they die. Only yogis or enlightened rishis, enlightened masters, they die directly without falling into coma. Other than enlightened people, Paramahansa Sevananda is one of the great examples. He never fell into coma before death. Consciously he passed away. He passed away in the sitting posture. There are few examples of great masters who passed away in the sitting posture. Masters, except masters, all other ordinary persons, they leave the body only by falling into coma. That is why You fall into coma and die because of the pain, severe pain. The next pranic space, in that the fight starts. Your desires wants to possess this body, but the time says, no, it is time, it is over, you need to go for the next body. No. So the fight between your desires and the time happens. Anyhow, only the time means, the kala, time only means you have to move to the next body. Like this, step by step, step by step, step by step, you move into different space and enter into the next body. In three chana, you assume the next body. Three chana, three chana means three moment is the maximum time you can stay without body. I will give you a few understandings about death. 
then you can put all your questions I will give the replies and give the answers because this subject has to be understood more by questioning I will give first all my hypothesis whatever I have experienced then you can analyze you will understand One more important thing you need to understand about this is as long as you are in this body this whole world will look in four color this whole world will look in four color you are able to experience it, feel it it's like a four dimension not even four color, four dimension and you will into this universal studio you will understand the 4D not 3D, nowadays 4D things have come any of you have experienced 3D means you will have the glass and you can see the whole thing as if happening in 3 dimension 4D means along with the movies along with the sceneries your chair also will shake you will have the experience you will feel as if you are undergoing the experience if there is earthquake in the movie your chair also will shake and you will experience the earthquake now as long as you are attached to this body the whole world is seen as 4D the spirituality, meditation all these things are looking like two color you think oh all these things later on will take care what is there ah, let it be there many people come and ask me Swamiji I already have they planned for a weekend picnic can you do the course here in the next weekend <laughs> because they planned for a picnic they want me to stay here and do the course next week see people have got so much value for their time but they forget somebody else's time is also valuable anyhow as long as you are staying in this body this world will look like four color the picnic the outworldly things everything will look like a four color spirituality will look like a two color then you think all right what is the meditation after all we can do it later on the picnic can we cannot <laughs> miss but the moment you leave this body and start traveling inside the whole outwardly things will become two color and the inner world things will become four color all the meditation, all the spiritual stuff the whole thing will become four color you should understand one thing as long as you are in this physical body this whole thing will be, look like an important thing you will be continuously running, 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 working doing every possible things to make money to make you, your life comfortable I have seen many people coming and telling me Swamiji, you don't have time to meditate never say you don't have time to meditate tell honestly that I don't give so much of importance to meditation everybody has got only 24 hours how can you say, I don't have time to meditate? I don't have time for meditation. No, never say that. Be very clear at least to yourself. I can't give so much a priority to meditation. I feel my work, my all this routine, my money, all these things are more important for me than the meditation. Let you be at least clear. clear. You can say, at least I don't understand that meditation is so important in my life then you are honest at least let you be honest to yourself as long as you are attached to this body this whole thing will look in four color only the moment when you leave this body you will understand which is real four color thing then suddenly the whole thing the world will become two color your dollar will not work there there the dollar is different this currency will not work there neither this currency 
nor this relationships or the properties or the status social life whatever you made what for you gave all your life nothing will have value in that space in that zone in that zone only the quality of consciousness is going to have a value one thing i want to tell you important thing not even your power power only is going to come even your merits and sins will not come there people think now if i give give some donation to temple i may get reward there no currency exchange offer is available in the spiritual world please understand there is a sect in a particular religion if you give donation to their uh, spiritual institution they give you the receipt and you are supposed to keep that receipt when somebody dies if you pay it certain amount of the, to the institution they will give you that receipt when you die they will keep that receipt with you so that you can take that receipt and show to god <laughs> really the police is something <laughs> please don't think i am telling so the real it is happening but i tell you there is no money exchange there is no way to exchange your money there is no possibility even your sins and merits are not going to come along with you there a small story okay driver bus driver any of you have been to chennai any of you have lived in chennai oh. bus driver from chennai if you know if you have lived in chennai you will understand the bus drivers of chennai they will directly take you to hell straight way to hell no this way that way no long route straight way to hell and mumbai also mumbai taxi drivers mumbai taxi and chennai bus this guy on chennai bus driver and one great religious preacher both of them died one day they reached pearly gates saint peter was standing interviewing the newcomers first came the bus driver saint peter asked what is your name what are you doing he said my name is periya swami i was a bus driver in chennai the list of merit and sins is taken out saint peter saw in his laptop saw the details and said all right let you have golden staff silk and rope first class ac suit in the hand go and enjoy next came the religious preacher who was preaching all over the world saint peter asked what is your name this guy said my name is kadabrananda what were you doing preaching religion all over the world saint peter took the data list of merit and sins and said no you can have only cotton dress wooden staff third class treatment go these guys started shouting of course you know religious preachers are the professional shouters <laughs> they are all professional shouting and he started shouting i'll sue you give me clear answer how can a bus driver have first class treatment and me third class i was spreading divine glory all over the world saint peter said here up in the heaven we don't bother what you do do bother what is the result please listen when you are driving people are all praying for their lives 
So he made many people as believers. When you are preaching, people are all sleeping. So we don't bother what you do, we bother what is the result. Of course, if any of you are sleeping, please get up. <laughs> Otherwise, when I go there, they will give me wooden staff. There is no exchange offer up in the heaven. Your merit and sins are not going to work. Understand? Only the way in which you live, your quality of consciousness is going to guide you. First thing you should understand, there is no heaven, hell, geographically. Geographically, there is no hell, there is no heaven. It is only totally dependent on your psychological state. If you are happy, blissful, you are in heaven. If you are suffering, depressed, you are in the hell. Small story, one more story. One guy died and reached the gates of heaven. St. Peter said, he was a big industrialist. So St. Peter said, what do you want to do? You want to directly go into the hell or heaven or you want to have a look into both and decide. You have a choice. You can have look in both sides. You can have few minutes of preview of both. Then you can decide. The guy said, oh, nowadays you have preview also. I will be very happy. Let me first have a preview, then we can decide. This guy is a great industrialist. So he wants to have a choice. They first took him to heaven. It was totally silent. Only few saints sitting on some clouds and singing hallelujah, hallelujah. And moving around. Nothing much to be seen. Very quiet. He said, all right, let me go to hell and see how it looks. There he went, he saw different kinds of discord is going on, different kinds of life, a full-fledged pub and all the great celebrities dancing, I think they go only, go only there. All kinds of people are there and bubbling with life and festival mood and all celebrities are there. It was really wonderful. This guy said, I want to choose only hell, no heaven. Saint Peter said, please understand, listen, decide now itself, afterwards you can't have a choice. He said, sure, I want to go to only to hell. Finally, he was sent to hell. The moment he entered the hell, simply two demons came and caught his head and they took him inside. They started torturing him in the fire. He started shouting, what is this? When I came, they showed me a different view. Now you are torturing me. You are threatening me. Now you are showing a different view. These demons were torturing. They said, oh, that is our marketing department. <laughs> So, understand, <laughs> if you believe there is a hell and heaven, if you believe your sins and merits are going to help, you will only end up in seeing the marketing department, <laughs> not the reality. Neither your sins nor your merits are going to help. All the idea of your sin and merit are created by society for better social life. They are not spiritual laws. Your conscience is not going to help. Only your consciousness is going to help. The idea of right and wrong 
is based on conscience. You are conscience. That's what it, what, it, what way you pronounce. Conscience or conscience. Your conscience is societal, given to you by society. But your consciousness is natural. Your being, your energy, your life after death is going to be based on your consciousness, not on your conscience. The quality of life which you lived, when I say quality of life which you lived, I mean how intense you have lived. If you are sitting here, if you are aware of your whole being, if you are aware of your whole surrounding, if you are aware of whatever is going on in your body and mind, that is what I say, consciousness. A continuous, clear, witnessing awareness. Only that is going to guide you after death. Neither your sin nor your merits. Don't think if you go to temple every day, there you will get some special allowances. God will be there, he will tell, no, come, 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 I saw you every day, come here, come this side. I will do some special things for you. No, never. There is a preacher, he is preaching, I, I myself have heard him, in North India, he is very popular in North India, he preaches. First year, you will have all sorts of beautiful wines and rum in the, in the hell, in the heaven. Do all the actions which purifies you here, you will have all the joys in the heaven. One guy was listening, he said, Oh Master, why should we leave all those things here to go and get there? Better to enjoy here itself. <laughs> if that is the thing we are going to get there, why not enjoy here itself? <laughs> and there is no even guarantee whether they will give there or not. <laughs> At least here we have a clear cut guarantee. And who knows the exact quantity we will get or not? And who is going to serve and who is going to take care? We don't know. If you think by living a religious life, pure life here, you are going to be rewarded there. Never think, never believe. Don't be religious thinking that you will be rewarded there. You will only, you will only end up in hopeless state. All your actions are not going to come with you. Whether you enjoyed or renounced, is not going to matter once you leave this body. The moment you are out of this physical layer, all your actions will be forgotten. The saint or sinner, nothing is going to count. Only one thing will be counted. How much consciously, with awareness, you live. Of course, the thing is, the more you become aware and conscious of your body and mind, more it becomes under your control. Somebody asked, can I, somebody asked me, can I become enlightened by controlling my sex? I said, enlightened people don't have sex, that is different. But don't think by controlling the sex you can become enlightened. Of course, I am not telling you go around. <laughs> Two things you need to understand. A Buddha is out of sex. An enlightened man is out of sex. A Jesus is out of sex. Krishna is out of sex. There is a beautiful incident. Once the Yamuna was filled with water, the flood was happening in the Yamuna, in the river Jamuna. There was flood. Krishna and gopis, they wanted to crash the Jamuna. And they finished all their Raslila. The biggest flood on the planet Earth ever born. After all the Raslila, he wanted to crash and go to his place. But the river is 
filled with water and he says if it is true that I am a brahmachari let this yamana open and give way immediately yamana opened and gave way and these girls were all shocked just now this guy did all sorts of things and which nobody can imagine and he is telling if I am a brahmachari let this yamana open and give way and the yamana is also opening and giving way what is happening when Vyasa writes the commentary Vyasa gives explanation enlightened master never lives in the body he is totally out of the body of course when a person becomes enlightened is neither male nor female he lives out of always beyond body enlightened man, man is beyond sex but the people who are trying to go beyond sex can all not become enlightened going beyond sex happens as a byproduct side effect of enlightenment that cannot be a technique or method to enlightenment enlightenment needs something more than suppressing yourself it needs meditation it needs transforming your consciousness so none of your virtue none of your acts are going to matter after you leave the body there is a small story one day there was a rishi in the forest one day a guy came in the midnight he asked the rishi can you stay here just for tonight tomorrow morning I will go away Rishi said why not please stay here you are welcome he gave him food and shelter everything next day morning that guy got up and he is about to leave when he was about to leave he felt too much of love and compassion towards the Rishi and he said oh Swamiji you helped me really in a big way by giving me shelter in the midnight please accept this small offering he gave me gave him he gave little money to the rishi rishi said why do you get so much of wealth you are having so much of money you are giving me he was having so much of money and gave little bit to the rishi this guy said i am a thief rishi said no 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 i don't want your money he sent him after that rishi was praying to god oh god please forgive me I have given food and shelter for a thief how great sin it is what will I do how will I remove this sin he started weeping profusely praying to God begging him to apologize him suddenly he heard a voice from the sky somebody is weeping profusely Rishi said, who, who is weeping there? God said, I am only weeping. Rishi asked God, why are you weeping? God replied, you gave food and shelter for him only one day, you are weeping. I am giving every day, should I not weep? <laughs> where will I go and wash my sins? <laughs> the real meaning of the story is, the guy, the rishi, has become too egoistic. He started feeling he is holier than others. Actually, God never bothers with sinner and saint. All these things are just societal. Understand? You are saint only when you are in the society. You are sinner when you, when you, when, only when you are in the society. If you are in the forest, who is sinner? Who is saint? You are saint as long as you have people to worship you. I have seen many guys in India. In India, every street there are there is a saint. There is no street which don't have a Jagat Guru. Jagat Guru means the Guru of the universe. And every street has not one Jagat Guru in India. That is why I always tell people. They can at least have the name Street Guru. 
it will be appropriate. <laughs> but every street one Jagat Guru is there. Every street in India you can see Jagat Gurus. These guys they feel great. They are continuously hunting for followers, disciples, because the more the number of followers, the more they feel they become big. The more people are worshipping you, you feel more you are a big saint. Saint is nothing but the idea given to you by your disciples. Sinner is again nothing but an idea given to you by your enemies. So neither saint nor sinner exists once you leave this physical body. After leaving the physical body, only one thing is going to matter. How consciously you live, because the consciousness is the only torch with which you are going to cross all these seven layers, all these seven space. Neither your wealth will come with you, nor your right or, right or wrong deeds are going to come with you, or your other supports, all your charity, all your donations, all your dana, nothing is going to come with you. People think, here if I give some money to Balaji, there he will give me in my gunta as exchange. <laughs> no currency exchange. Only one thing is going to come with you, that is the consciousness with which you live, the awareness which you created inside your being when you live. Once you cross these layers, naturally you will see if you have lived your whole life with consciousness, with awareness, in a meditative way, you will have a clear choice either to take birth or to become enlightened. If you have not lived your life consciously, if you are deeply tied to your body and mind, if you have never lived with full awareness, immediately you will enter into other body. Because you cannot wait, you cannot stay without body. You are so much attached to body, you are so much tied to your body, your lust for body is so much, you will just jump into some other body. Whatever body is available, you will not bother. Let me first go and enter into the body. Let me not bother. Then later on you will decide. You enter into some body. If you can live at ease with yourself, when you are living with the body, if you can sit with yourself, if you can relax with yourself without having thoughts, that is what I call the power of consciousness. How to know whether we are living consciously or not? You will be able to sit with yourself without thinking. If you have that capacity, you can be sure you have the consciousness. But we people, we can sit with anybody else, but we can sit with, we can never sit with ourselves. The moment you get some time also, you switch on the TV. Tatak, 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 the same remote and the same foolish programs. Or you catch some newspaper. From first page to last page, last page, you start reading. If you don't have anything else, also you start planning or thinking. If you can sit with yourself, utterly relaxed, even for a moment, you will have that same relaxedness and you will leave the body also. That time also you will have patience and relaxed awareness to wait and choose. One important thing you should understand, it is you who program, it is you who design your every body and including your parents. These are all few truths. Of course, you can question me. The question answer session. Including your parents, it is you who choose. 